Charlie, I wanted to switch focus and, uh, and ask you about one of your stocks in particular uh, and whether you're still as bullish on it because it's had a good run and to what extent you think that the sort of short squeeze uh, January uh, effect uh, drove the stock price higher, and that's Viacom CBS. Yeah, thanks for bringing this up because uh, I don't know if you know this, but a lot of people watch your show, and when they uh, see me on the street, they ask me about Viacom CBS a lot. And <laughs> do they as you know, <laughs> yes, there are a lot of people that do. And uh, this stock <laughs> went to below 10 in March, and I got a lot of angry confrontations on the street, and now we're back up above 50. And fundamentally, uh, it was ridiculously cheap at 10. It was trading at three times earnings. Um, there was no reason for the stock to trade at 10. Uh, and it has come back, and it got probably about 42, 43 on fundamentals, on the prospects of Paramount Plus, which got advertised a lot in the Super Bowl yesterday. And then the short squeeze started. And this was one of the most hated stocks on Wall Street. Uh, and the stock got propelled by the GameStop phenomenon up to 60. So I would say it's not right now at a PE of about 13. Uh, that's still obviously a big discount to the market. I can't pound the table on this stock at 54 the way I could at 11, but uh, we still believe in the long-term value here. Do people uh, who come to you on the street, Charlie, not yell at you about cruise stocks? Which one? Royal Caribbean? Are you still there? Uh, well, I'm glad you asked me about that one, too. Uh, so in our disclosures, this is all public information now, we don't actually own Carnival anymore. In March, uh, that oh, stock got down to 10. Uh, Carnival, we do not own Carnival anymore. That stock got down to 10, more than doubled. I think when you and I talked about it in the spring, it was a name that we thought was going to survive. Their business would come back. But there fundamentally are issues about long-term uh, cruising and, and whether they're going to be down. That's an industry that needs to fill every boat. So we still like Royal. Uh, we still like um, some of the other names, uh, Norwegian Cruise Lines. But Carnival has the lower margins, and the stock went up a lot, and so we no longer own Carnival. So I just want to come back on, on one broader point as opposed to the specific stocks, that clearly most of the discussion the last couple of weeks has been whether the hedge funds that have been short-squeezed suffer de-gross, de-risk, and that takes uh, some of the uh, wind out of the sails of the broader market markets. What about the other side of it, that uh, your stocks, others have been pushed higher what happens when you start to take profits? I mean, is there a risk that the broader markets suffer from this uh, in a kind of way that people aren't really thinking about? Yeah, that's a great question. The good news is our names are not the big proponents or components of the indexes in the way these tech stocks are. So whether Viacom or whether uh, Mosaic, which we talked to you guys about a lot, Lazard isn't even in the big indexes. So the names that we love are not getting moved around by these flows. And they tend to trade more on their fundamentals unless you have a phenomenon like the Viacom situation. That became very public, how big the short interest was. With exception to that, most of our names don't get whipsawed around by the flows into equities. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.